Welcome to the Lean Out Your Business podcast, a show dedicated to helping entrepreneurs accelerate business growth and simplify success. I'm your host, Krista Grasso, and I've been working with businesses for more than two decades to help them lean out and optimize what's working while eliminating anything that's not adding value. So if you are ready to get more time back in your day, more profit in your business, and to do business differently, growing and scaling on your terms, let's dive into today's episode. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Lean Out Your Business podcast. Today, I want to talk about how to create really transformational and really effective experiences for your clients or even your leads. So if there is one thing that I have done really consistently for, oh gosh, probably about 25 years now is facilitation. I have facilitated, I don't even know how many thousands of events from in-person leadership offsites and retreats to workshops and webinars and live training classes inside my programs to coaching calls and consulting calls and everything in between. And no matter what it is that you're facilitating, no matter what it is that you're leading or what it is that you're hosting, There's this one thing that I do that I feel like makes such a big difference. And so I want to share that with you today because every time I share this with my clients and they start using it, it seems so simple and it seems so obvious, yet it makes a really big difference in their results. It makes a big difference in how confident they feel going into leading or hosting that experience for someone. And it allows those who are attending to really get out of it what they were hoping for and walk away with a lot of clarity and with some sort of win or some sort of result. It's a technique that I call playing psychic. And no, I'm not getting woo on you here. This is just what I call really pre-playing how the experience is going to go. So what I find so often is that most people are really rushed. And because they're rushed, they may not actually rehearse. They may not actually practice. They may not do the proper prep to really show up feeling confident and thinking through what the experience is that the attendee is going to have. And I think that's a really critical component. But there's another component beyond just reviewing your slides in advance or reviewing what you're going to say in advance, or maybe if you're speaking from the stage, for example, standing up and doing some dry runs and some rehearsals, there's an extra step that I think you really want to do. And that's where this whole playing psychic concept comes in. And so before every single thing that I facilitate, what I do is I quite literally visualize the entire experience end to end. I go through the entire experience from the people showing up and entering the physical room or entering the virtual room to the flow of what I'm going to say and where there's going to be interaction and where there may be questions. I go through each of the different concepts that I'm going to be sharing and I pause and ask myself, is there going to be questions here? What are the questions that somebody might ask? Where may somebody not understand what I'm talking about? Or what context do I need to provide for this to make sense? Or what do I need to ask people to do in advance so that I could dive right into the meat of the content and not have to spend too much time on context? So I'm going through and taking things far beyond just a walkthrough or dry run of what I'm doing, and I'm actually envisioning how the entire experience is going to be for the person who's attending and specifically where they might get stuck, where they might have questions, and what those questions might be. Sometimes I change the flow of my delivery. Sometimes I change the content. Sometimes I answer questions before they're asked, or I will build natural pause points into what I'm doing to open up the floor for questions, anticipating that that is a place that people will have questions. When you take the time to play psychic, when you take the time to really imagine what the entire experience is going to be like, and you do that 
within the frame of the results that you want somebody to walk away from. So if you're teaching a free webinar and you're trying to sell your program, we go into it a lot thinking about our results. Like I want to sell, I want this many people to convert. I want this many people to book a sales call. But why is that person showing up for your your webinar? Why is that person investing an hour of their time in what you're teaching? Sure, maybe they have interest in working with you and this is a way for them to learn a little bit more about if your program is the right fit. But more often than not, they're there because they want to learn something. So are you thinking about their experience and their takeaways? And learning something does not need to be knowledge. It does not need to be more things they need to go do. Learning something could be having them think about something a little bit different. It could be having them realize that there's a possibility that they might not have fully thought through before. It might be giving them the confidence or the clarity that they can do something that they weren't sure that they could actually actually do before. You want to go into it thinking, what is the result? What is the transformation? What is the outcome that this person is here for? And you want to make sure that your content, that your delivery, that your pacing, that everything that you're doing actually delivers that. And at the same time, you also want to make sure that as much as you are thinking about the result that they want, that you are also getting out of it the result that you want. And that gets into then thinking about what questions are they going to have if we keep going with the webinar example. So what questions are they going to have about your program? Where are they not going to believe that maybe they can do it? Where are they going to have objections beyond the typical time and money ones that everybody has, right? Like what are the other very specific objections that they might have or places where they may get stuck? How can you and what you're delivering ease those objections before they even have them? I think effective facilitation is both an art and a science. And the science piece of it is what you're going to say, the order in which you're going to say it, having an introduction, a middle and end, right? There's all of these different components and structure that goes into facilitation, no matter what it is that you're leading. Again, maybe it's a webinar, maybe it's a multi-day retreat, like I'm getting ready to lead at the time I'm recording this, but it's the art side that really makes the biggest difference. It's the art side where you take the time to really think through the client experience, think through the results they want and think through the results that you want and make sure that you're structuring what you do and delivering what you do in a way that achieves that. And so here's how I actually play psychic when I'm about to do an event. And I'm going to use my retreat as an example because I'm in the middle of actually playing psychic on my retreat and going through each one of the days. So the first thing I do is I create my outline. I create my content. I get really clear on the flow of the event itself. So with my upcoming retreat, it's three days. I love three-day retreats. It ends up being a really great balance where people have enough time to learn, people have enough time to reflect, and people have enough time to integrate. And I structure all of my experiences that way. So you're not just learning something, but you're walking away with clarity on exactly what you're going to do and clarity on exactly what you're not going to do. So I go through and each day builds on the next day. So not only do I have an overall goal and objective and result that I'm hoping that people take away from the retreat, but it's what is each day's experience and what's each day's result that is additive. So on day two, I couldn't cover the stuff on day two without covering the stuff on day one first, because they need to have this perception shift. They need to have this awareness. They need to have done the deep work on day one to be able to effectively do the next piece on day two and so on and so forth for day three. So first I get that entire structure down. I look at the journey of what do they need to learn? What do they need to learn when? Like I can't teach them this thing until they've already understood or mastered this other thing. Or they can't fully step into their next level until they get clear on what their next level identity is, for example. That's one of the activities that we do at our reimagine retreat. And so I map everything out and frame it all out with that flow in mind, looking at what do they need to know first and what do they need to do next? And I use that to build out the outline for each of the three days. 
Then I literally mentally rehearse what that experience is going to be like. I sit in a quiet place. I close my eyes and I really picture people walking into the retreat space. I picture them walking in on day one and I try to see what they're going to see when they walk in. It helps me design the space to be inviting. It helps me design the space and the experience so they start to have that transformation from the second they get there before I even start teaching or I start leading or I start facilitating anything. And so I'm always thinking about all senses, the entire experience. And so I envision people walking in. I envision what questions they're going to have, what they're going to be looking around for. I envision them finally getting seated and getting comfortable and us getting started and what they need to hear to start to settle in and feel comfortable with the others and feel comfortable sharing about themselves and about their business and feeling like they have the safe space that I try to create for them so that they can be vulnerable and they can really share what their biggest challenges are and what their biggest opportunities are in their business. And they feel comfortable opening up and supporting others with their amazing brilliance. So how do you create that inviting atmosphere so somebody feels comfortable showing up that way from the beginning. And then I go through the agenda and what are we going to talk about first and what questions are people going to have and where might somebody have resistance about this topic or where might somebody have confusion or questions about this topic. And then, okay, after we do this, is this a space where I need to give people an opportunity to ask questions or do I roll right into the next topic? Okay, next topic. And I literally am going through and I'm seeing the room in my head as I'm looking around and seeing, okay, who's going to have questions? And sometimes I'm doing this without actual people in the room because I don't know who's going to be there yet. But it's like I'm envisioning this room of six to 12 amazing business owners and who's going to have what question and what's it going to look like and where might people get distracted or where might something not make sense or where might something feel too overwhelming. And I'm framing through all of it and I'm going from activity to activity to activity and I'm looking at where should we take a break because I want to give people time to process or I want to give them time to start to connect with one another and build those relationships so again they start to get more and more comfortable so they can really have the conversations they need to take their business and themselves to the next level. And so I'm going through each one of those activities. And then as I get to the end of my day, as I'm doing my mental kind of play through here, I'm looking at, did they walk away with what they need? Are they leaving feeling the way that I need them to feel, right? Are they feeling super overwhelmed and super anxious and super, oh my God, there's so much to do? Or are they feeling like, I got this, I got this, like, I got this, there's clarity. I know what I need to do. I got this, right? And that's my goal. I always want people to leave feeling I got this. I know at my last retreat, people immediately went out and took action. We came back the next day and everyone's like, I did this and I sent this and I created this and I cut this and I did this. And they left feeling clear on what they needed to do. They left feeling like they had it and they went and actually did it, which was so impressive. And that to me is a sign that I've structured things in the right way when people leave with that feeling and able to take those actions. And so I do that for the first day and then I do it for the second day and then I do it for the third day and then I do it end to end. And it takes time. It's not something that you can just hack together and last second you throw it together and you go and you try to present or you try to facilitate and it's the best experience ever. You're going to have those things and the more seasoned you are at doing that, the more you can do something last minute and deliver that exceptional experience. But especially if you're doing something for the first time, if maybe you facilitate a ton of virtual experiences, but you don't facilitate a lot of in-person experiences, or you're doing a brand new webinar or workshop, I think it's so incredibly valuable to do this mental walkthrough, what I call playing psychic. To me, it makes you a better facilitator and it makes people more interested in signing up for what you do and in experiencing what you do because they walk away getting out of it what they need. You walk away getting out of it what you need. And as much as 
I know you might not agree with me here, but I personally love PowerPoint. I know so many people who hate PowerPoint and think that I'm crazy for loving PowerPoint, but I really love PowerPoint. Always have, always will. To me, it helps me tell that visual story when I'm facilitating and when I'm leading. So I am a slides person. I know a lot of people who are allergic to slides and PowerPoint and do not like it. I think you need to figure out what works for you. But whatever that is, whether it's something that you're sketching out in your Remarkable or your iPad, or whether it's something you're doing in a tool like PowerPoint or, you know, the Google version of that, whatever that ends up being for you, there's only so much you can really do with that without also doing the kind of mental rehearsal, the mental envisioning of what that experience is going to be like to really truly make sure that you're delivering the results that you want to be delivering and just creating a really exceptional and really memorable experience. I always get so many comments about my retreats, but not only is it about the fact that people walked away and they feel like they've taken themselves to the next level and they've taken their business to the next level and they're dreaming bigger and thinking bigger and have clarity in how they're going to actually make their vision reality and all of those things that I do with people at the retreats. But what they always comment on is the experience itself and how every single activity builds off of the prior activity and how the entire flow was put together in such a specific way. And again, because it's really brilliant business owners who are at these events, it's fully transparent what I'm doing, right? There's no magic behind the curtain. They can see exactly what I'm doing and they love being able to see that and experience it because they usually always ask me, how do you do this? How did you know exactly what to say here? How did you know what question I was going to ask? Because I literally will say at some points, and now I bet some of you are probably thinking, and it's because I did the pre-work to think about what they're probably thinking. It's because I took the time to play psychic. I took the time to envision all of the different things. Now, do I get it right 100% of the time? Of course not. Every now and then someone asks me a question out of left field. Every now and then something I thought was going to land, somebody I can see the confused look on somebody's face and realize I need to quickly pivot, right? And so it's not like it's 100% foolproof, but I will tell you it's pretty effective and it creates a far better experience than it does just winging it or than it does just reading your slides out loud beforehand and saying, I'm ready for this. So I highly encourage you to leverage this technique. For many, many years now, I've referred to this as playing psychic and my clients seem to get a kick out of it. So hopefully you do as well. Maybe you'll come up with a different name for it for yourself. But I do think it's such a highly valuable practice to put in place. And I can't wait to hear how this helps you transform the way that you lead and facilitate and host any sort of event or experience, whether in person or virtual. And if you would like to attend a retreat with me in person, I would absolutely love to spend three magical days together with you. You can find all the details about any retreats that I have coming up at leanoutmethod.com slash retreats. And I will see you again next week. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Lean Out Your Business podcast. I hope you got a lot of value and actionable insights from today's show and would love if you take a moment to leave us a review. If you have any questions on today's episode or on how to lean out your business, join us over in our private Facebook community where every week we do live training and Q&A and I'd love to have you be part of the conversation. Head to leanoutmethod.com slash group to join us. And before you go, be sure to subscribe to the show so you're the first to know when we release a new episode. We'll see you next week.